um, to what you've just seen. Um, I'm going to launch Star Tools, which is the, the program I've been using for the last couple of years. Um, it's uh, it's it's got a lot of features and it's quite clever the way it works but um i think it's um it's 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 possibly a bit easier to use than pix insight it doesn't have the same level of features um no way but it uh, it does a, a lot of sort of similar things as we'll see um what this doesn't do is stack individual subs so it's a it's a, a program to use after stacking rather in the same way you might use Photoshop or GIMP. Um, so what I'm going to load in here, uh, there's two options. You can either open uh, a one-shot color file or you can go into the Compose module here at the top. Uh, Compose allows you to import your narrow band subs like what Davey was using there. So if you've got a mono camera and you're shooting RGB filters or narrow band filters, you can you can load them individually into the the compose module, uh, and it, uh, it'll 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 process them that way. But I'm a I'm a sort of one one shot color camera user, so I'm just going to click on open. Just uh, been recorded. Yep. Yeah. My computer's gone incredibly slow. That's probably because uh, probably because I'm on Zoom at the same time. It is again. It's sort of it's quite processor uh, hungry. This uh, mm. program. So my images are on the on the desktop. Is a free program, Graham? Start to it's not. It's um, it's it, it's forty quid. I think it's sixty Australian dollars. Um, gone up to sixty-five. Graham. It's gone up to sixty-five, and for that you get a two-year license um, for for two years worth of updates. At the end of the two years, you're not allowed to sort of get any more updates, but you can continue using the the latest version that you've got. Presumably, you've got the option of buying again. And Back on yeah, track. you can if you want. If you wanted to get the the very latest versions. Uh, now this isn't a, this isn't a very good sign. Uh, I don't know whether my computer is uh, is unable to cope with Zoom and running start deals at the same time because it, it just uh, it is. You're on it, desktop, Graham. Sorry. You were on your desktop. Yeah, it just isn't opening the image. All right. Give me a click, there, Graham. There we are. Right, okay. Right, we'll open that one. The dreaded circle of death. The dreaded circle of death, yeah. It is like it's, mine. It's terribly, terribly slow. This might uh, this it's might take one. some time. <laughs> <laughs> Another drink while we Thanks, <laughs> whiskey. So if the first thing it usually does is ask you what sort of data it is that you're, you're loading. So this is it here. So uh, this has come from a one-shot colour camera. So we'll go for the middle option. So if you're using a DSLR or a one-shot colour CCD camera, go for the, the middle option. And it's going to warn me in a minute that it's, um, it's found stacking artefacts. Because what I'm loading in here is a is an image that's already been through Deep Sky Stacker. Right. Is the one shot cut? Is it like a black and white? No, it's a colour image. It's a colour no. camera. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so there's me warning, which I'm just going to click on OK. So, basically, we work our way down the left hand side of the page. We start with this block of modules at the top, and then we move on to this block. And that's all I ever do. You can, if you want, move on to the, the bottom block uh, as, you, as you move through it. But each of these individual modules does a different thing. So the first thing we do is we click on Auto Dev. And that's, that's basically what it's going to do is it's going to have a crack at stretching the image. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to way, way over stretch it, uh, hopefully, as we'll, as we'll see. Graham, is um, that image out of... Deep Sky Stacker completely unstretched. Yes. Just as it drop as Just Deep as Sky it, Stacker yes. dumps yeah. it. Yeah. 
So exactly how you would load something into into Photoshop yeah. mm -hmm. or GIMP. So this will be like the auto save file out of Deep Sky Scanner. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thirty two bit then. Yes. I don't know how, how they've got this, yeah, just like this. this all together. I had a go with this program a couple of years ago, but I couldn't quite get. I got some okay results, but I couldn't quite get it that worked properly, so I never bought right. it. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh. So it's done. It's done a. It's done its its all stretch now. the The idea of of start tools is that what you do is you actually process the the image in reverse. So um, you, what it's doing is it's showing you all the sort of errors. It's showing you all the all the 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 faults, if you like, in your picture, and it, it allows you to sort of well take them out. Take them out essentially. So we've got we've got a lot of gradients as you can see at the top and the bottom of the picture that's that's from light pollution this image was taken from home all we do with the auto dev is we we keep it so we click on keep and now we can start to uh, try and remove some of the some of the issues yeah keep just like save yep just move on to the next keep that and move on to the next uh, the right, next just, stage just yeah. Um, what are these? Um, are these the stack file that you're using? Is that is that out of Deep Sky Stacker, but yeah. starting with 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 the stacking images, um, basically raw at, at um, yeah. sort of full size, as it were. Yeah, it's a big file. It's about a hundred meg. Um, yeah. the, the file that that I that I loaded in. Yeah. Uh, you're not finished to by filter speed at all. What we do, what we do now is uh, we, we run through these modules in order. So I would do a bin, prop, and a wipe. So bin, basically, um, if anyone's familiar with um, binning equipment, binning that's where you, you you combine pixels together. This is software binning. So what it's actually doing is it's it's improving the signal to noise ratio by reducing resolution. But in actual fact, it isn't reducing resolution because uh, because of seeing um, the number of pixels, the, the amount of, of sky sampled by the pixels is, is below the seeing threshold anyway. So you're actually you're not losing any resolution at all. Uh, but what you are doing is you're you're, you're gaining signal to noise. So again, all we're going to do is, is is click keep. It's done its it's done its bin. It did that that, that quite quickly. Uh, It'll now take us back out to the the main screen, and we'll go on to go on to crop. Now the reason we we go on to crop is it told us there were some stacking artifacts. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stack uh, crop out the very edges of the right. frame like that, and that'll that'll remove the, right. the the stacking artifacts. So we'll keep. The reason we do that at this stage is because if there are any stacking artifacts when we do our second stretch. They're going to be incorporated because it's good. The program's going to think that that's actually that's data, but it's not. We want that all removed. So the last one we do in this stage is a wipe. Now, what wipe does is it removes gradients from the the field of view. So any any sort of unevenness in your background caused by light pollution, things like that, it will it will attempt to remove it. And all we do is we click do. Now I used flats here, so there are no dust bunnies. If the if you don't use flats and you've got dust on your image, you need to you need to tell the program. If we've got time later on, if this runs quick enough, then I, what I'll do is I'll 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 show you the process with a another image which uh, I didn't use flats for. Um, and dust bunnies they confuse this this module. So. Uh, so it's kind of flattened it a little bit. So it's set at seventy-five percent. I'm just going to nudge it, nudge it up a little bit to eighty-five percent, because I'm not happy that it's removed all the gradients properly there. Hopefully, this will do a better job. <coughs> right. At so this point, Brian. At this point, you're obviously seeing a monochrome image. What, uh, we are. 
we are it's asking me now just to check the check the color you have which you have to do so again all we're doing at this stage is is we're we're dealing with the the, the problems in the in the background of the image so we've done that now we've kept that so all i've done is a is a bin a crop and a wipe right so now what it's actually done is it's it's subtracted all of those things from our raw image so the next time so when we now do the stretch it had all of those things applied to it so what we do is we do another stretch so this time I'm going to do a manual develop because an auto dev gives you absolutely no control over it so it's asking me do you want to stretch this again well yes we do and this time instead of it doing it automatically we're just going to drag the slider up so this is just basically this is stretching the image so what I usually do is take it up to a, the sort of mid 80s and we'll start to see things appearing now what we're actually looking for is two clusters of galaxies one here and one up here this is the Dialic group NGC 7331 and up here is Stefan's Quintet I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that we can see a bit more of the, the detail um, this wasn't ideal data this was sort of uh, captured from from my back garden so there is quite a bit of light pollution now what I'm aiming to do here I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further is is get this just so that we can kind of see it I'm, I'm watching the background to see when the sort of noise in the background so we can see that that's the that Stefan's quintet up there at the top of the screen and this is the dialic group down here so what I want to see is how far we can push this and I reckon we can probably push it up to about 92% yeah we can see the, the galaxy starting to starting to come out now and we've got some of the the fainter members of the group as well starting to appear as well I reckon we might be able to go a little bit further what would you do if, um, what's the difference between going up four and leaving it there um, well, we can pull we can pull this up as far as we want, but it'll it'll start to look nasty. Um, I'll 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 do it so you can see it. Um, but we we don't really want to do that. So if I if I pull this up to sort of ninety seven and a half percent, there we are. You see how it's kind of blown the yeah. blown the background out. We don't we don't want that. So I reckon down probably maybe maybe around about there. It's right. probably as far as we want to go with it. Okay. So we're just starting to see speckling appearing in the background. So that mm -hmm. I would say that's the that's the noise threshold. We don't want to go above it. So we'll keep that. Okay. So what I would do next is I would do an HDR. I'm going to zoom in so we can see the the effect of that. When, so when it finishes processing at each stage, does it automatically go back to that original menu? Uh, no, I mean, what it's doing, it's tracking everything we do. So at, at any stage, we can go back. Yeah. And we, can actually, we can actually go back to any point in the process any and, start, and start, start again, basically. Too many back to any of the stages that you've actually kept. You can you can and, and what what it's cleverly doing is it's looking at every step that you're taking throughout your processing um and it, it's final noise reduction which i have to say takes a bit longer than than pix insight does um but what it does is it 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 takes notice of everything you've done so it's it's it knows where the sort of noise threshold levels are and it, it applies that sort of intelligently towards the end so this this module hdr is designed to, to try and find um, detail hidden in, in an area where there's a high dynamic range, a lot of different brightness values. So if I just click on before and after, uh, oh, come on. <laughs> no wonder my computer's running slow, it's trying to do updates. <laughs> <laughs> I always put oh, my computer an no. hour early. Yeah. Oh, it was on this. It was on this afternoon. It's uh, fortunately it was logged on to someone else, um, and it doesn't look like it's uh, done what it's supposed to do. So that, if I zoom right in, you might be able to see very, very slightly. It's it's had a very slight effect, but we'll keep that anyway. 
what I, what I find works better with, with this particular type of, of, of detail is the deconvolution module. So we'll click on that. Now, as Dave mentioned in his little piece, the um, deconvolution does, does have a, a, a tendency to knack your stars. So we're gonna we're gonna get it to auto generate a star mask. So it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna build a star mask. It's gonna mask the stars out. So it's not gonna apply this this module to the stars at all. So they will be preserved as they are. It's just gonna apply it to the the rest of the image. Um, so In this is Photoshop. This... I'm I'm guessing this would be the same as applying a high pass filter, which does the same thing. Blows out the stars if you're not careful, but brings a lot of detail out in you. Galaxies yeah. and nebulas. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, hopefully the 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 effect of this one will be will be a bit easier to see uh, once it's done. And then these these as I say these little actions they, they don't take very long for it to for it to do. It's a similar similar amount of time to pick inside to do each each of these little stages. But uh, the final noise reduction does take a few minutes you'll see as we move on so it's uh, hopefully it's gonna it's gonna sharpen up a little bit of the detail in the galaxy there right so we can again see before and after that's the before and that's the after. Before and after. So it has it has brought a little bit more of the, the detail out in the galaxy's core. So we'll keep that. Now we'll add some colour. So the next module I will go on to is the is the colour module. Okay, so that's this one here. In the colour, and it's going to ask ask me to fill the mask so that it applies the, the colour to the whole image. Um, I find the legacy module works the best on this type of uh, type of image. So there we are. We've now got some. We've now got some colour. We'll just keep that. See, we've got a few uh, noisy pixels in the image, so we're going to deal with those now. So everything I've done up to now, it's been it's been tracking everything I've been doing. And um, to do our final noise reduction, we just click on track, and it's going to ask us, do we want to remove the grain or do we want to equalise it? Now this this depends on on how good your data is. This isn't brilliant data, so I'm going to go with grain removal. Uh, and what I find is that uh, anywhere between seven and twelve pixels. So I will probably start started about start about there about eight pixels and then click on next now this bit does take a bit of time so uh this will probably take it about three or four minutes to 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 do this to smooth out the the background on this image um um and it it's it just to me this this is kind of it's just it, it's getting a sort of a bit like what Davy said in his bit it's it's just finding a a workflow that works for you um finding an order in which in which to do things um yeah, this, this is what put me off it was what sometimes when you go especially on to to youtube or you go onto the forums etc everybody's changing all the settings all the time and so you, there wasn't yeah. like a flow to it no um I, I've I've found I, I've found a few videos on sort of tutorials on on this and and the, the guys just said just leave them leave them alone unless oh, unless you really really know what you're doing I think as you know as you, as you sort of as you get get more used to using it and knowing what what each thing does you can you can start to experiment with the with the things a little bit. Yeah. Um, does the does the program itself? I mean, you mentioned updates which you get. Yeah, you know, two years. Does it actually update that often? Um, I'm not sure. You've got to you've got to sort of go and visit the visit the website. The way the way they work it, um, they email you a license file which you have to save into the folder where you store the program on your computer. So 
every now and again you can go and visit the Star Tools website. You can see they've they've made a sort of a, an, an update available, um, and you just download it. And what you do is you 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 just transfer your license file from the the folder containing the old version into the folder that contains the new version, and that's it. It starts working instantly. Um, well, I'm having problems with the latest one, Graham. One one seventeen. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. I mean, this. Yeah, this is this is one point six. Un un unfortunately, my my license expired about three weeks ago because this was um this was this was a birthday present for me two years ago. So while this is while this is going on, I'll, I should ex explain about um the, the start on the Star Tools website. You can download uh, a trial version of the software, and it's unlike things where you have a thirty day period um to decide whether you want to buy it or not. With Star Tools, what they've done is they've made the um, the, the trial version uh, unlimited. Um, where they get you is you can't save any of the images, so you can have a you can have a play around with it. You can have a practice with the modules, and you can do everything I'm doing here, uh, except okay. save the image at the end. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, it's it's good it's good and bad, but um, uh. I guess. I guess you know you can you can really you can really sort of test it out and see if it's if it's something that you want to you want to do and there's uh, uh, you can do that over several you months. Really yeah, you'd you'd be pig sick, wouldn't you, in this country if you if you if you if you, if you took out a thirty day trial of something and then the the weather was crap for thirty days and you didn't actually get to take any images. So. Do you think that's likely to happen? Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't see it. Not in, not in this country. It's, I can't remember the, I can't remember the last time we had a clear night. It's a yeah. few weeks, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Graham, what? you know, you know the file that you're starting with. What size is the yeah. file that you're starting with? It's about a hundred meg. It's um, it's a, it's a stack of uh, twenty or so light frames, um, and twenty flats. And uh, is it a TIFF? It's a TIFF. Like a TIFF. Yeah, it's just it's just your standard standard output file from uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, uh, this will render quicker if I just put a box around it like that, and you'll get to see um, the noise. So there you go. There's the there's the noise reduction has has taken effect, but it's only taken effect in that little box. So if I click on full, it'll apply it to the whole image. So that's the that's the slowest part of this whole whole process is that that noise reduction bit. Uh, so once this is done, the full it'll revert to. That's it. We just keep. So we can now, if we want to, move on to other modules that'll repair stars, uh, remove banding. Um, do all sorts of stuff. We can remove um, lens aberrations, things like vignetting and um, uh, coma field curvature from uh, from not having a flattener. You can you can do all of that stuff. Um, you can shrink the stars if you want to. You can make your stars smaller. Um, do all kinds of things. You can even do a, a stereo three D Im image out of it if you wanted to do that. But that that's it. That's 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 my image finished um that that's a typical sort of workflow for me these uh, are vignetting or gradients on a planetary image are you really no you um, shouldn't you, you shouldn't uh, shouldn't shouldn't oh, overestimate what i'm capable of <laughs> <laughs> so what i'm going to do this time is uh is we're going to open a different different type of image so this is a this is a nebula this time um, so this this is the, the iris. So I'll, again, I'll, I'll kind of show you some of the the things that it the, that it will that it will do. So again, we're a one shot color source. So we'll click the middle option, and it's going to tell me again this stacking artifacts. There it goes, and we just auto dev. So this time we're going to see I didn't use flats, um, unfortunately. <laughs> I told you I was lazy, <laughs> so uh, it's gonna it's gonna throw up its image in a moment. So again, it's gonna blow everything out to reveal the warts. No. Hey, what camera did you use? 
What's that? What, what camera did you use? Camera? Yeah. It's a, it's a ZWO uh, ASI 71 Pro. So it's a um, APS-C size chip. Okay, so you can see we've got some some dust bunnies on here. Um, again, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep that. This will um, they will they will confuse the wipe module if we're not careful. So when we come to use wipe, we need to we need to tell it they are not data. <laughs> they are not part of the. They shouldn't be in the picture. So when you're processing, ignore them, and I'll show you how we do that. Brilliant. What about all the dust bunnies in, in there? Whereabouts dust bunnies? There's yeah. one there. There's like a black circle. Right, See okay. it? Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, There's right. another one there. There's one up here. Yeah, the they're all over the place. You'll, oh, see when, yeah. Yeah, you'll see when we get a full screen. Yeah, there's a few. If, yeah, when you, you put it out, you can see these little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My dust bunnies are bigger than that. I was going to say, <laughs> mine look like donuts usually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these are, I think, uh, these are, I don't know whether they're um, far away they look like. or close. Mm -hmm. when, they're, when, they're, when they're like that size, that signifies they're close to the chip or far away from the chip when they're... The that, that, I, I would think that signifies, that it, yes, because if they're on the chip, then they're big and shadowy, big, aren't they? Right, so these are prob <laughs> probably on my filter. Those bunnies as well. Yeah. Maybe on your so we'll, we'll go through my standard routine again, so we'll bin it first. We'll see it. So what it's done, you can see it's it's, yeah. it's condensed the image there. It's improved the improved the signal to noise ratio. You can see those dust bunnies really yeah. well now. You can see there's a there's a there's quite a few of them. Now what will happen if if we go to the white module and I don't identify those things, it will make a right mess of the image. Again, we're going to crop the we're going to crop the. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to crop one of the dust bunnies out altogether so I don't have to. So we'll keep that right let's do our wipe now this time instead of clicking on do I'm going to click on mask and invert and I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to go through these until I get the lasso right hopefully that's recording so I'm not sure how much of this you saw well we got over the bit where you selected the lasso lasso too. right yeah. okay so we invert my mask, we select lasso, and then all we do is we draw around all the dust bunnies. So yeah. what we're doing is we're telling it, ignore these things. These are not part of the part of the signal. I'm going to zoom in to see these better. And you've got to do everyone individually. Yeah. You've you? got to do everyone individually, but there ain't that many of them, thankfully. So um, there was a cluster in the kind of looks like one there. Yeah. <coughs> that's probably okay. How can you tell a dust bunny from a ones. from dust? Um, <laughs> they're usually perfectly <laughs> round. They're usually that's perfectly right. round. So yeah, I think, I think that's um, okay. They're they're all good. So we'll invert that and keep that, and then we'll <coughs> click on do. So it'll now remove the the gradient so this this is slightly better quality data there shouldn't be too much light pollution in this one because this was done from a bottle three site it didn't seem to be much of a gradient there no so there we are so that's done a much better job than the first one did so we'll check the color before we accept hey, google we'll, we'll keep on. that now because we've got a mask in 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 progress here we're set we're, we're just going to we're just going to clear that before we move on to the next step and keep. So then we do our development again. So it's in, do we want to do a stretch the image again? Uh, yes, we do. We want to redo the global stretch. <coughs> so we'll pull this one up again, sort of mid 80s. And we've got the, the iris starting to come out. And we'll pull this one up a little bit further. So we can get some of this dark dust coming out as well. We'll probably go a little bit further. Hey Google, turn the light on. There we are. Okay, so we'll keep that. And HDR, again, looking at the sort of bright region in the center. This is where you can 
where there is a lot of dynamic range, you can lose a lot of detail uh, in the in the central part here. So this is going to try and recover this. Uh, it's a subtle effect, but the good thing about this is we know the core is is very bright, and we can reveal the core just by by clicking on that. So we hopefully we should be able to see. There we are. So that's the that's the before and that's the after. So that's that's brought a little bit more out yeah. that had been lost by uh, by the stretch. So we'll keep that, and we'll do a we'll do a deconvolution again, and we'll auto generate the star mask. I do like this um, automatically generated star mask. It's much easier than doing them manually. So this is going to again seek to pull out detail within the within the nebula that's I understand this tries to sort of recover information that's lost through seeing effects and things like that mm -hmm. in the atmosphere so again we click on before after again you can see there's there's a bit more fine detail in the core after that mm -hmm. so we'll keep that we'll move on to the color Again, it's going to ask us to fill the mask, so it applies this to the, the whole image. Uh, it's starting to get nice and colourful now. Mm -hmm. I do find this particular, um, it defaults to what it's called the constancy, where it applies this scientific colour constancy model to your image. And it can sometimes be a bit overpowering. Um, you can see these stars here, they do look, they look very, very colourful so it's a little bit over yes it does a little bit over the top so I'm just gonna it? back it off a little bit. Yeah. I'll maybe back it off to there. That looks a bit better. We'll keep that. So we're now ready to do our noise reduction again. So this is the this is the the bit that takes the time. Again, I'm going to choose grain removal because it's not the greatest data. I'm going to pull it up to about 12 and a half pixels this time because uh, there is a little bit more noise. I've stretched it a little bit further, so I'm going to ask it to do uh, a little bit more work on the noise reduction. So uh, this is where we, we hit the pause button and fast forward. This is the Blue Peter moment. <laughs> People of a certain age wouldn't remember. So there we are. It's, uh, it's Point for David's team. It's removed the removed oh, the noise. Right, yeah. So that, mm -hmm. that was the Probably before, that. and that's mm -hmm. the after. Yeah. yeah. So we'll keep that. <clears throat> Again, that's it. That's it. It's finished. Um, mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> so that hasn't nice. that hasn't taken long, has it? <laughs> <laughs> which suits which suits me down to the ground. <laughs> twice as well as you know. Twice as well. I've had to do it twice. So, it, uh, yeah. so, so exposures to capture the spin dust. What was your exposures on your camera? Uh, they were five minutes, Paul. Five, five minutes. Yeah, it was from a it was from a dark site. It was from the caravan, which is over in. Did you use Cumbria. your filter on this though? Because it's a reflection nebula. So was it? No, it's filter? just no filters at all. Just yeah. just a, just an IR UV block. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, actually, both the images I've processed are, were were taken just with with no filter. Even the the Galaxy one from home mm -hmm. it was, uh, was just the IR UV. So. Yeah. Unlike crack, unlike cracker jack, Graham, you don't unlike get a cracker jacks. You don't get a don't, cabbage. I don't get a cabbage. I don't get a cabbage or a cracker jack <laughs> pencil or whatever it was they used to give. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, well, that's it. That's um, that, that's very nice. That's, as I say, there are there are, there are 